Hey, good morning, everyone. Josh is severe weather. Uh, if you are new to this channel or just stopping by, I want to welcome you. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much. And I apologize for making you wait a day. I really had a pretty busy day yesterday. I was on the road, had some cell challenges, so I really couldn't do any posts. And I really hate making people wait. Um, I know we all have to learn to be more patient in this life that we have, this short life. But had a traumatic experience when I was a young adult with that. Uh, I was visiting my grandmother uh, who passed about 10 years ago. And uh, she had one of those, you know, the phones that you hang on the wall that has the cord that wraps around to the next room. Well, uh, we were waiting to go to, a, to lunch and waiting kind of impatiently. And I was getting hungry. If you look at me, you know, I, I love to eat. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll poke fun at myself there. But uh, she was on the phone for a long time. I, you know, minutes turned into probably an hour uh, with uh, my great aunt, who also has recently, not recently, but passed in the last decade, you know, and a long conversation that took about an hour. And, uh, you know, while I was sitting there waiting on lunch, I just couldn't wait anymore. So I started snacking on a bowl of nuts that was sitting there on a, on the dining room table. And then finally she gets off the phone, comes over and says, Josh, I'm so sorry. You know how it is when sisters talk on the phone. I'm like, oh, no worries. I hope you don't mind, but I, I just polished off this, ball, this uh, bowl of nuts that was sitting on the table. And my grandmother goes, oh geez, at my age, all I can really do is just suck the chocolate off of them. Yeah, horrifying to say the least. <laughs> uh, so I don't want people to wait any longer. So let's go ahead and talk about the weather and I'm gonna focus on the tropics first here. And we are seeing some signs of life again. Uh, it was a very active June. Uh, we don't typically see three named storms in June ever. And that was the case. And now we're in the middle of July and not much has happened. Uh, fortunately for us, because water temperatures in the Gulf, excuse me, in the Gulf of Mexico are running very hot, perhaps at record heat. Uh, and I'll get to that in a little bit, but we do have potentially some development here east of Bermuda, not a threat to any land, but maybe something that can scoop up a name here with the next name on the list being Don. Right now, not tropical, it's kind of more subtropical, uh, and I'll get to that in a little bit, but it's not gonna be a threat to land, just something I'm monitoring for you guys. Um, in the Pacific, we now have Tropical Storm Calvin, not a threat to Mexico. It's actually gonna move out, maybe become a hurricane here in the next day or so, and then weaken over cooler waters. Uh, the pattern stays right for another system next week, which might get the name Dora. Now, next week in the Atlantic, we are going to see um, maybe some potential development. Right now, a large area of what we call Saharan dust. It keeps the atmosphere dry and prevents any kind of development. There are signs that that could get chipped away a little bit here tomorrow and maybe a front-running system out in the eastern Atlantic. A long ways off at this point, nothing to really be super worried about, but something I'll be keeping an eye on, because what it may do is be the sacrificial lamb for more systems coming later in the month of July. Uh, there will be what we call a CCKW, that's a convectively coupled Kelvin wave, uh, which enhances lift and allows um, maybe more tropical development. Uh, that is on the uh, Indian Ocean side, takes about 10 days or so to get over to the Atlantic. So something that we'll be keeping an eye on next week, but in the shorter term, nothing of great concern for the Eastern United States or the Gulf of Mexico. I think our bigger problems are coming from homebrew, from storms that are slow moving and producing severe weather and certainly flooding. Uh, and my thoughts go out to everybody in Pennsylvania, New York and New England that have been dealing with flooding. We may not be done yet. Uh, this is from Matt DeVitt here, uh, meteorologist out of Southwest Florida, Penn State grad like I am, talking about how hot things are in the Atlantic with respect to average. We're running a degree or so above average, perhaps even the hottest we've seen on record. Records aren't very accurate and aren't there for a long time, but certainly it's, it's worth a look. Um, but this doesn't necessarily foretell multiple storms. However, when waters are this warm, um, when you have hotter temperatures, if conditions are favorable, if they're right, low wind shear, good amounts of lift and storm development, then there's more storm, storm fuel than what you would typically see. So we definitely need to be on our toes here as the meat of the system is still about a month or so away. And here's a look from weatherbell.com of our ocean temperature as hot as 32.4 Celsius, uh, which is about 91 Fahrenheit um, in the near waters here of the Caribbean Gulf and Bahamas. So bathwater basically, and you look closer at that and you can see uh, this graphic doesn't help out a ton, um, but you can see anytime we're at the high end of the charts, the, the whites, uh, then maybe we need to make that scale a little bit warmer here. Um, from Twitter, I saw um, shallow water temperatures off of the Florida Keys are running very hot, mid nineties, as hot as 97. Now this is shallow water. 
uh, for, for the real tropical fuel, you need to have deeper waters warming as well. So these fluctuate very much, but a lot of the reason we're seeing record heat over the Florida Keys and South Florida is because the water temperatures are running about as hot as you'd ever see. And so we'll continue to see record heat in South Florida. I mean, it's usually hot in the Everglades, Miami, and the Keys this time of the year. But even for people that are used to 90, 91, 95 is a significant jump. So just something to be prepared for. Now, here's a look at the water vapor imagery to show you what's going on in the tropics. And in the Atlantic, we don't see anything of great concern at this point. Let me pull up my cursor and try to annotate this for you guys. I use Zoom, so it's not my favorite, but it does allow me to do a lot. Now, here in the Pacific, we have Tropical Storm Calvin, a minimal tropical storm, but it's growing and likely to strengthen as it moves out to the west. Uh, the Gulf is very quiet, so nothing going on here. The Caribbean is also quiet. Strong wind shear coming across uh, the southeastern United States. Very dry air aloft with a region of high pressure here. Big high pressure dome over the west and storms traveling across the Midwest up and over that ridge with occasional complexes that aren't moving much. So we'll talk about this. Now, we're not likely to see much going on here coming into South America. The area of, of concern at this point doesn't look like much. It's, it's an ugly looking sheared system, but something that in the next couple of days, once this wind shear up here relaxes, does have a chance of getting going and becoming maybe a lower end tropical system. So we'll keep an eye on that, but it's no threat to land. This is Bermuda here, it's east of Bermuda. Uh, so no immediate threat at this point, just something that may scoop up a name here in the next day or so. Now, looking at the African coastline, things aren't super busy here either. Um, I will draw this for you guys so that you can see. Uh, let's see here. Let me get my cursor back up. Um, we've got a wave that's coming right off the African coast moving west. See this huge area of black right here? This is very dry air aloft. And at the lower levels, we have very dry level, uh, dry air as well coming off of the Saharan desert. So this is going to get pretty much killed off and not have a chance to develop. Now, the one behind it looks like it's got a better chance here at about 10 days or so. So towards the end of next week, maybe around uh, 21st, 22nd, we might have something to keep an eye on. An awfully long time in the in, in the world of weather forecasting to get an accurate read on, but something we'll be watching as some models do show that development. What will happen is we're going to see some moistening of the lower atmosphere, and that's going to provide more favorable weather conditions. Uh, whoops, let me get back to that. Sorry. Uh, more favorable weather conditions for potential development here. So that's what I'm going to watch for you guys next. This is Calvin right here. And you can see it is growing. This is Mexico, so it's well away from Mexico at this point. Uh, here is the infrared, and it's got uh, the look of a system that could rapidly develop into a hurricane over the next day or so. The National Hurricane Center has it reaching hurricane strength around lunchtime on Thursday and continuing to stay a hurricane until later in the weekend, then reaching cooler waters and weakening. Again, not a big threat, 45 miles per hour, but may go from 45 to 95 here very quickly. Uh, so obviously a, a sign of, of uh, an El Nino where we do have favorable weather in the Pacific for multiple storms that strengthen quickly, but the models are in good agreement that it's no threat to land at this point. Uh, most of the model guidance takes it to either strong tropical storm or category one peaking here in three days, which would be Saturday morning, and then gradually tapering down as it hits that cooler water. Uh, here's a look at our subtropical uh, system that is forming. And again, you see a big trough east of Bermuda. Here's Bermuda. Uh, lots of wind shear, upper level low east of it, upper level trough north of it, upper level trough northwest. Not in a great spot to develop, but it does have some window for development. The National Hurricane Center gives us a 40% chance for uh, something to form into a depression or storm, and it would be subtropical, so not fully tropical. Water temperatures are, are to the point where they are warm enough to support something subtropical. The temperatures aloft cool off quickly, so it doesn't get a chance to really go warm core on us. Uh, either way, it could get a name if it does get to 40 miles per hour, but look where it's going, middle of nowhere here in the Atlantic. And classic El Nino, where waters are warm enough to support activity well offshore and not much near the shore at this point. So we may, we may get another name. This may be our fifth name system. Well, the fourth name being used, we did have an unnamed storm in the middle of January uh, near the coast here that hit eastern Nova Scotia. Uh, but that is very busy for 
the first uh, month and a half of the tropical season to get storm number five if it does happen. And if it doesn't, that's fine with me as well. Here's a look at the GFS model and you can see where the system is. It's gonna actually move Southeast and deep in here, uh, reaching its peak. It looks like uh, Thursday night, Friday morning, maybe down to about a thousand millibars according to the GFS. It does take a bit of a loop and then starts tracking Northeast and weakens very quickly. So if it develops, it's gonna be a short-lived storm probably at the end of this week, Thursday into Friday, and then it's dying over the weekend. After that, things are fairly quiet. We can see uh, GFS hints that we'll get some development off of Africa near the Cape Verdes around the 21st. Uh, reliability of this model this far out is super low, but it is something to keep an eye on. And I'll just show you that. Uh, looks like it's gonna move west. And if it does survive, it's probably not gonna be a threat to the US down the road. Um, as you can see, it's already on a weakening trend, but it may kind of set the stage for more development farther down the road. Because once you get one system out there to add some moisture in, uh, then certainly uh, the uh, potential is there for more. Now, this is our subtropical feature. Uh, you see a little bit of a spin right here. See this kind of low level swirl, nothing forming near the center. So it's still got a ways to go. Uh, but models show it going southeast and then turning northwest and then diving back to the east, taking a kind of a, an S shaped curve. But there is a, a decent amount of agreement that in about a, a day or so, we start to see development into a tropical storm. Maybe it's not tropical, uh, but certainly uh, has that kind of wind speed with it. Uh, and models, ensembles take it in this direction. This is a non-tropical feature here, nothing else in the Gulf or the Caribbean to really stress about. And then here is our area, according to the European, of potential development. Notice uh, the GFS tries to develop it here and kills it here. The European ensembles, on the other hand, say it's got to go farther west before it gets into a more favorable environment. Most of the ensembles here are not very bullish on this system. This is 14, 15 days out. So we're talking the 25th, 26th of July. But one or two ensembles do try to develop into something here. So I'll keep an eye on it. But right now, <clears throat> just because two ensemble members have something doesn't mean it's going to be a big deal. Just something we'll keep an eye on. All right, so back to the U.S., an active weather pattern here, big trough over the central U.S., big complex moving through Nebraska and Iowa this morning. Another complex has flared up over Arkansas, and you're really getting crushed right now in southern Arkansas. The east is quiet for now. We're going to keep an eye on this system and then one behind it, um, and then the west is super hot here. We've got a what we call a death ridge that will build in, producing potentially some near all-time record heat here in the next 10 to 15 days. Uh, convective outlook right now, big area of slight risk later today into tonight from eastern Nebraska down into western Kentucky and Indiana. So a pretty big area under a slight risk. That involves 20 million Americans. Uh, that is surrounded by an area of marginal risk involving over 50 Americans. So Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Binghamton up to New England and then down to Little Rock. Um, there is some tornado threat here over the central part of the country here later today. A bigger wind threat, though. Look how big an area we could have severe winds. And the hatched area is something I'll be watching for. If this uh, development near Omaha does hold together, uh, then we could be dealing with more significant wind damage across Missouri, Kansas, maybe even in Illinois here tonight. So an enhanced risk certainly is on the table here once we get a better feel for what's going on. That'll be up to the folks in Norman, Oklahoma to decide later today, but wind damage and maybe some big hail as well in the Kansas, area, Kansas City area here. Um, our current radar does show our complex here moving through eastern Nebraska. We've got severe weather in the Omaha region as wind gusts to 70 miles per hour are possible. This is the area of greatest concern. It's gonna be moving southeastward here during the morning and then probably an area of more favorable environment for stronger winds across this region here. We're going to have to keep an eye on what's going through Des Moines as well. That could hold together in the western Illinois here this evening, including St. Louis and maybe even into western Indiana overnight. The area of greatest concern, though, is west of St. Louis, west of Indiana, across uh, northern and central Missouri, eastern Kansas, southeast Nebraska, and southern parts of Iowa. That's for today. After we get through today, we will still have some severe weather potential and right now, just a huge marginal risk with where our front's going to be, but I could see an upgrade beyond slight risk. Right now, it's over Ohio and Western PA. 10 million people are in that, Pittsburgh, Columbus, maybe Cincinnati, Cleveland, uh, but still keep an eye on things here in Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Uh, we may see if, if ingredients are, are looking more confident on our models for severe weather, we could see this uh, area grow, and I would not be surprised at all to see that. Right now, no significant areas of severe weather, but certainly a chance for strong winds. 
a uh, low chance for a few tornadoes here as wind shear starts climbing and a chance for hail across this entire region. This is a day two forecast and we'll likely see some changes coming. Day three is Friday. We see what's left of that moving into the Northeast. Heavy rain is going to be on the table and more severe weather. The last thing you really want to hear if you're in this region, but do be prepared for that on Friday. And then our next wave comes down through Kansas into the South Central states. And we're again looking at severe weather. Beyond that, um, the uh, Storm Prediction Center has a low confidence of an organized area of severe weather. There will be severe weather. We just don't know exactly how that plays out yet over the weekend, but be prepared for that as well. Another stormy weekend. Here's what's going on. The NAM model shows uh, this is actually a piece of the polar vortex. We don't really talk about it in the summer because it doesn't sound as scary as in the winter, but it's there and that's enhancing our wind flow. You see that over Iowa and Illinois here this afternoon. Uh, we see a little bit of piece of energy that split off over Arkansas as well that moves into Mississippi where we could see a little bit more severe weather in Mississippi. Nothing like last month, but certainly to watch. This big trough swings east through Quebec tomorrow. We see the next piece of the polar vortex diving down into the Mississippi River Valley, into the Ohio Valley here. And you can really see it going on the NAM here, moving through St. Louis here Friday night. Um, this doesn't necessarily mean our strongest winds and severe weather are going to be in Missouri on Friday, but you can see it's going to enhance things probably farther south and east of where this tracks over the Tennessee Valley and maybe into the Carolinas and mid-Atlantic states over the weekend. So multiple troughs swinging east, bringing us multiple waves of heavy rain and severe weather in the Midwest, in parts of the Mid-South, and unfortunately, again, in the Eastern United States, uh, Friday, and again, it looks like on Sunday. Lots of storm fuel in place here. This is why we're sustaining big time storms. Look at all this Cape over Kansas and uh, parts of Missouri. We will likely see big time storms around Topeka and Kansas City. Um, that does shift in pieces eastward into the Ohio Valley, but the biggest storm fuel remains over the central United States right on through the end of the week, and it grows over Alabama and Tennessee and Kentucky on Friday. So we definitely have ingredients starting to come together for some severe weather and certainly a lot of rain as well. That heads east into the Carolinas and southeast here over the weekend. Uh, another wave comes through the upper Midwest, and that is what we're watching on Saturday and Sunday, especially in parts of the Northeast. Real quick, and I don't have a lot of time for you guys, but um, we'll, we'll take a look at forecast radar here. You can see storms diving south and east. Big storms here this evening between 8 and midnight. Kansas, western Missouri, that moves south and east and weakens. Maybe another impulse drops south and east here heading into Friday in some of the same places that saw it here with this storm system. A look farther uh, east and northeastward, and you can see some beneficial rain in Wisconsin, Illinois here, maybe heavy rain around Chicago this afternoon, then spreading into Michigan tonight. Uh, we see uh, reformation here tomorrow afternoon across Ohio, especially central and southern Ohio, and then moving into western PA. Another wave comes through Iowa, and then Minnesota and Wisconsin get hit Thursday night into Friday morning. Uh, the NAM doesn't go past lunchtime on Friday, at least not the 3K. Uh, just south of there, you can see that again. We'll have some heavy storms over the Tennessee Valley, more storms over Mississippi. And then here's our front draped southeastward from northwest PA, right on into the Ozarks region here late in the day tomorrow. That continues southeast, slowly moving through the Tennessee Valley and Carolinas. Next disturbance follows, and that'll be here in time for this upcoming weekend. Uh, look at the southeast and you'll notice we do have a very slow moving storm complex in southern Arkansas, northern Louisiana, the Arklatex, Texarkana region. I'm going to get to that in just a little bit. Uh, random showers and storms, Mississippi, Alabama, they're not moving quickly. So we do have somewhat of a flood threat here in Mississippi, maybe Alabama here tomorrow. Um, then storms form eastward across Georgia and the Carolinas here heading into tomorrow night and especially on Friday. Florida's not super busy. It's gonna be hot in Florida. We will see some air mass storms, but not a very active pattern in Florida. Uh, the more action that we see is gonna be heading into Friday here over the mid-Atlantic and over parts of West Virginia and Virginia here Thursday night and especially on Friday. You see where the front is draped here. Slow moving storms, maybe some rough winds, but certainly heavy rain again is in our forecast. And that's the case here in the Northeast. We see wave after wave of storms hitting parts of the Northeast Thursday night into Friday. There is some flood threat again, as we've already had tons of rain. And our excessive rainfall outlook right now is highlighted across Southern parts of Arkansas. Uh, we have seen radar estimated rainfall totals near smack over around seven to eight inches. And then North and West of Magnolia towards Buckner and Stamps in Arkansas amounts 
potentially that are going to get beyond 10 inches here this morning alone. So definitely a big time flash flood threat, not the large area that we saw in the northeast here over the weekend and Monday. Uh, but nonetheless, big time rains coming for southern Arkansas, anywhere from Louisville eastward towards smack over here. And that threat, I think, is going to build south and east. Uh, towards the Arc La Mesa region. We already see some big totals east of Hamburg, Arkansas, around five inches. And that'll move towards the Delta region of Mississippi here in the next day or so. So very concerning. Uh, we will see some heavy rain as well in the Ozarks and across the uh, Great Lakes region here today and tonight especially. Tomorrow shifting into the Appalachia region from eastern Kentucky upwards into Maine. Friday, we see a big area of potentially heavy rain. It's not going to be a repeat of last Saturday, but it will be heavy rain nonetheless, impacting the same places. We also see it here across the central Mississippi Valley. Saturday, just a marginal risk for flash flooding, a bigger risk here in the southern, in the, uh, southern High Plains. And then the Gulf Coast region and once again, the northeast here on Sunday look very busy. And this is my day that I am concerned about in New England, Sunday and Sunday night. Seems just like a repeat of last weekend. Uh, but Vermont, your rivers are already beyond their banks. They're going to come right back up. Uh, Connecticut and um, Massachusetts and New Hampshire, I'm a little bit more concerned. And same for parts of southern Maine uh, for some flash flooding here. Some more videos, uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, but you can see on the European model, um, lots of yellows on here uh, indicating very heavy rain. Uh, first big wave, this is Thursday night and Friday in the northeast and also across the southeast. And then beyond that, the next big wave moves in, and this is Sunday, very busy day across the eastern United States and in parts of the Gulf states as well. Uh, rain totals here over the next 60 hours are extreme across parts of Arkansas. Uh, zooming in, we do see from the NAM model, potentially east of Texarkana, 7 to 14 or even 15 inches of rain. And this may not be completely accurate, but that potential is there. Parts of Mississippi also have potentially up to 10 inches or more of rain falling. This is north of Jackson over north central Mississippi. And then parts of Alabama and Georgia could see six to eight inches. This NAM model does uh, do some extreme rainfall totals, so I would not put a lot into it. But certainly you can see that that potential is there. Uh, and looking at Arkansas here, most of this rain is coming today, but definitely potential for over a foot of rain to fall in a few communities here in southern Arkansas. Uh, the European model, you can see our heavy rain starts piling up here on Friday, amounts of two to four inches of rain in central and eastern parts of New York, New Hampshire and Vermont, as well as southern Connecticut. But the wave behind it's probably going to rub more salt into the wounds here for us uh, with very heavy rain expected, potentially another three to six inches across much of New England, uh, two to four over eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, uh, Delaware and New York, uh, the New York City metropolitan tri-state area. And in the Midwest, we do need this rain, uh, but we're going to see quite a bit of it here in parts of Nebraska and Iowa, potentially three to six inches of rain in western Iowa. Most of that coming today, but again on Friday, uh, maybe some flooding on the south side of Chicago as well, up to five or six inches, some heavy rain in parts of Detroit. Um, maybe we get missed here in central Illinois, maybe not. This is just one model run, but be prepared for that. And uh, then the other story is going to be the heat. Very hot in Texas and the southwest with near record heat expected. This is today. Uh, we're heating up in the mid-Atlantic and east tomorrow. We're staying hot in the southwest tomorrow. Uh, this is Friday, 117 around Havasu, 101 in Dallas. Saturday, that heat intensifies. We're going to see potentially 130 in, in uh, Death Valley. Uh, 115 in the Central Valley of California will likely break some records. Um, that heat continues to build in the southwest. This is Sunday. Really no relief coming on Monday either. Same areas are going to be baking and Tuesday. And eventually we see that heat expanding north and eastward into the plains and even into the prairies of Canada towards the second part of next week, I believe. Parts of the south are going to get hotter as well. So enjoy the lower humidity in the Carolinas today. It's going to get jacked right back up here next week. Thank you all so much for your time. I know that was a lot. Um, but if you did enjoy this video and you're a first time viewer, uh, please consider subscribing. And if you are a subscriber, I do have a membership channel now. I'm working on building that up. We're going to have some extras as we continue to grow that out. Uh, even a little bit can help support me so that I can uh, continue to improve upon my offering for you guys and do my very best. Um, I definitely uh, want to give all the glory to God who has given me the gift here to be a meteorologist and weather forecaster. He's not giving me the gift of being a comedian. I just like to try to be funny. 
Um, but that's my gift. Um, I give God all the glory. I just wanted to share that with you because it's important to me. Um, but my calling is to share God's word. Um, God has called upon all of us to share God's good news. And I, over the last 10 years of my life as a Christian, believe that that is my calling. You know, we all are given gifts and some of us have the same gift. Um, but not everybody's been called, but we have been given the gift um, to potentially accept that Jesus Christ is our savior. Uh, I feel like I talked Monday about <clears throat> how the enemy is kind of holding us back, whether it be from building our faith or from not having any faith. There's a lot of people out there that have kind of moved away from believing in God and have accepted that we're in dark times and maybe the world is coming to an end, but there's nothing you can do about it. I truly believe that that is correct. There is nothing that we can really do to stop that. Except if we lean on God, then we let him do everything for us, then we can live out our full potential. Romans 13, 11, King James says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed is a great example of uh, the fact that we need to wake up and lean on God who can give us salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. That same verse, New International Version, Romans 13, 11, that the day is near and do this, understanding the present time that the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. It means, folks, we need to wake up and get off our butts. Stop being complacent. Stop believing that you can't do it all and start believing that God can do it all and that Jesus Christ has been risen from the dead so that we can live eternally. But while we're here on earth, we can still make a huge impact. We can help other people see the light in a very dark time right now. That's all I wanted to share with you. There is so much good news for you. It's not even funny, but we need to appreciate the first fact that we are given that salvation if we accept Jesus Christ as our savior when we first believed. It is something I struggle with every day. We're all going through storms in our life. But if we wake up and see that God can help us through those, and it may even be maybe in our short time here on earth, God doesn't look like he's doing a lot. What he really is doing is, is setting us up for eternal life. You can accept that gift and I'm happy to pray for you. Uh, I'm very bold today. I've had coffee. I just had an awakening. I had a come to Jesus moment. And I wanted to share that, get that off my plate. So please be safe out there. I know a lot of people are dealing with flooding and heat. It's nasty. I get it. Um, but I want you all to be as safe as possible. And I'm going to give you more videos and do my best to help out with that. I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you all so much. And um, I will talk to you again in the morning. Have a blessed day. See you then.